All right, here's the little hobbit house in winter. Obviously, we need to shovel the walkway. We'll go inside there and see how it looks. All right, first, let's you can hear the fans going in there. Let's so let's try this. Check the flow. So here is the flow out front of this. But once you go through, it speeds up because we got a venturi effect happening here. Come back out again. Okay, so it's not windy so much out here, but just going in here, you see the difference. So let's go inside, we'll take this with us. Probably there more specifically. All right, so here's our door. And I've got like this rock here. It's my latch, if I turn it like that, it unlifts the lever. And there are our filters. You can see the temperature in there. Uh, it's cold out. I'll, I'll publish the, I'll put the official temperature on the screen. Let's go and look and see what happens. Inside will probably be like 59 or something blowing in, but out here, it's just around freezing, just below 32. Okay, let's close this. And there are these little tubes. There's the one of the windows there. And the windows are screened so that bugs can't get in, but they let in lots of air. And the air comes in, slows down in here because it's a big space and then any dust will settle to the floor instead of going through these, these vents. So let's check flow with my non-scientific method first. So here's, there's some vents on the other side of that. Some, maybe not the most scientific method. We'll pull out the anemometer in a minute. So, so this is an anemometer. It measures airflow. It's a hot wire anemometer, which means it measures it by checking the voltage of the air as it cools off a wire. So I'm gonna put this into, and here's the actual wire here. And we'll pull this back and put it in front of the, the holes here. I'll find the spot where it goes up, where the actual flow is. I'm just sort of moving around looking for the peak flow here. That's our current levels. Not, it doesn't pick it up super much here. You'll see more on the inside. The last question is how do I change the filters? So I take off this top bit here and I just slide them out. It's just a, just a filter like this. And I'll pull it out and put the new one in. Take this side off too to get that all the way out. So that's all there is to it. Uh, they're not very thick filters because I don't want them impeding my airflow very much. And we don't get much dust coming on them anyway, so it's fine. I change them every few months. So now we're on the roof. These are the solar hot water heaters. On sunny days, they're, they're great. They, they provide all our heat. Today, that's the south sky, no sun at all. So they're not producing much heat today. But let's take a look, see what we got anyway. So 42, 43, something like that. Maybe 100 and, 110 Fahrenheit. So that's just sort of free heat to the other end. That's at the starting end. It goes through all these different tubes, goes back underground on this side down here, under the little staircase, up that side and then through this last bay. And then here's the one that's got the temperature sensor downstairs. We're close to it here anyway. So that one's a little bit higher. Well, maybe actually, maybe a little bit lower actually. So, Anyway, it recirculates through that, and then it goes downstairs and into the mechanical room where it fills that big 105 gallon tank, which I'll show you in a moment. We do also have some wood that we've stacked. It's uh, mostly maple and cherry there, and then we've got like crappy willow wood and other stuff like that around the other side of the house. All right, so coming in the front door, we got this airlock area first, and then, so this is the living room. Note the fire's not on yet today. We'll Put it on at some point uh, in the evening if it gets cold. 
we got all the sunshine coming in here, and well, no sunshine today, but when there's sunshine, this room doesn't need any heat, it just heats the whole house just with the sun. And there are radiant tubes in the floor that will spread that heat around as well. And there's radiant tubes that go from the bedrooms underneath the fireplace and back, things like that. So we haven't turned on the heat in the bedrooms until actually last night before this snowstorm. And let's look at the thermostat here. This thermostat is turned on, but it's, it's sitting at 66, so it's not actually probably running right now. So it might turn on in a minute or two. I don't know. We'll go downstairs and see if we can get it to turn on. Maybe I'll bump it up once so it turns on downstairs. Okay, so now it's calling for 68. When we go downstairs, it'll be on. And, yep, that's it. This is, the, we got zone heating, so this is one of the zones. And, uh, yeah, there's other zones in other parts of the house. And that's it. All right, so let's look at it in here. This fan's on two out of 10. 59 Fahrenheit, 59 Fahrenheit coming in. Previously, before I closed off the Hobbit house, these actually used to be one or two degrees separate, where the, the smaller tubes on this side, because this is an experiment, right? So this, these are smaller tubes on this side, and they had a more moderating effect than the larger tubes on this side. And so it would always be two degrees more moderate on this side than this side. Uh, and then it goes into the room, you can see I've got it blowing up, and then it goes off to the bedrooms, 64 and 43 at the moment. It is interesting that the this one has, this type of tube has a 50% and this one is 32. These are solid wall and these ones are perforated. So there's some difference in the humidity that's getting in uh, from that. And then I've got other tubes that I'm not using with different experiments. So for instance, these guys here. And one experiment worth conducting is sometimes I'll unplug this and just pop this off. And let's just see the airflow with the fans off. And this is due to the Bernoulli effect flowing over our house. So even with the fans turned off, we always get pretty good blowing going through here. Let's see if I can catch it just right. So no fans, but the air still blows over the house and it still passes through here. So other things to look at. So here's the solar hot water system in here. And when we look at the panel, the control panel, I can see that the temperature at the top of the solar panel is 35 Celsius. And someone's showering right now, but let's go through and see what the temperature in the tank itself is 22 Celsius. So what that means is that we need to add a little energy to it. That's not gonna be enough to shower in. You want 60 degrees or so for showering. So on today with no sun, etc., cetera, we, we still need to add heat to it. But on a sunny day, this goes up to 60 degrees, and then we don't need anything. In fact, it gets so hot that we have a, a mixer here that mixes in cold water so that it, we don't get burned or scalded by how hot it gets in there. And then this is the actual heat going out to the house right now. There's a, a unit like this that says the two zones are heating right now because we don't have any sunshine. On sunshiny days, we don't need this at all. But these are the two zones. There's this top zone here the one that's in the front of the house. And this one's saying it's putting in two gallons per minute, 28 watts, to pump it through. And this one down here is only one gallon per minute because I've got it mostly turned off. This is the back side of the house, 26 watts. And the difference is that this one here goes to our guest room that I've got these knobs here turned off on. So it doesn't have as high of a flow rate. All right, that's that.